Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wonder Series. Yes, it's that time again. It's Wonder Series Wednesday, your weekly opportunity to wonder what life would be like if you looked at it from a different perspective, if you opened yourself to the opportunities and the possibilities and other thought processes out there. And in turn, how could you create that healthy, happy, fulfilling lifestyle that you have always dreamed of? I'm Denise Stiegel. I am your host here at the Wonder Series. The Wonder Series is sponsored by Living Healthy List at livinghealthylist.com. And so today I'm really excited to be talking to my friend Tamara T. Lotus Hill. A uh, little about uh, T. Lotus. Uh, she is a spiritual wellness expert, spiritual life coach, 70 intuitive healer, master Lenormand reader, and mother of five amazing sons. As a minister of spiritual metaphysics, T. Lotus has given thousands of spiritual readings and healing services to clients from all over the world. Her services and teachings have helped her clients create a life of happiness and abundance, even when the task might have seemed insurmountable. Since 2005, her company, The Sacred Path, has been helping clients to become the happiest versions of themselves by teaching them how to connect with their inner strength, shattering limiting beliefs, and overcoming fears. And this is my amazing friend, Tamara T. Lotus. She is the host of the Triple L podcast, the Live Love Lotus Show. Uh, and that podcast, you can find that on Transformation Talk Radio or any place that you listen to your podcast. My dear friend, T. Lotus, I love your name, T. Lotus. It's just it's so pretty. Thank you so much. It and thank you great. for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You are such an inspiration to so many people. And I really just, I just love your, your energy and your spark. And, you know, this month we have been talking about resilience. So we're talking about resilience through the year of 22, but specifically, you know, resilience when it comes to yourself, you know, inner resilience. And how do you find that, you know, life is tough. Sometimes there's a lot of struggles. There's, there's stress, there's strain, there's grief. How do we even, you know, how do we do that? And so I'm excited that you and I are on this call today because I know you have some great uh, tips and, and strategies. So, but before we get there, tell us a little bit more about who you are and how you bring your gifts to the world. Well, once again, thank you so much for your beautiful and kind words. And what you see in me is just a reflection of what is within you already. Um, I, as your the introduction, um, as you said in the introduction, I am a spiritual wellness expert, law of attraction life coach, and a minister of spiritual metaphysics. I'm also a 70 intuitive healer. I became a spiritual uh, entrepreneur and business owner um, because all of those things helped to transform my life. And when I find things that are successful in helping me uh, find my breakthrough or help me overcome uh, um, loss, which uh, you know we'll talk about in a second, um, then I share those. And so I do that through my business. Before uh, I started the Sacred Path, my business uh, was a sign language interpreter. I still am a sign language interpreter. And uh, with the pandemic that happened that, uh, a couple years ago, I pivoted to full-time spiritual work. And so with through the Sacred Path and with my services, I help people to realize the, um, the power within them, the divine wisdom, the divine answers, that those things are not outside of us. They are within us because we are first and foremost spiritual beings directly from the divine living in these uh, human spacesuits, I like to call them, <laughs> for a temporary for time. time. But we're, we're spiritual beings first. And I wanted to touch a little bit on my spiritual name, T. Lotus. It, uh, the lotus flower is a flower that needs muddy waters to grow. <clears throat> Excuse me, speaking of throat chakra. <laughs> <laughs> needs muddy waters to grow. 
and um, every day it uh, it it rises through the muddy waters, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't bloom or unfold until it has emerged from those waters, and it's always growing towards the light. And so I look at the muddy waters. I call the muddy waters. Um, the challenges, the the traumas, the blockages, all of the the muck that we experience in our life or low vibration, those are the muddy waters of our lives. And I take on the characteristics of the lotus flower by always growing towards the light no matter what. And that's what I encourage other people to do. And then once I've emerged, people can see the beauty of the lotus, right? I can radiate my light to others. Um, and that has been something that I've really had to hold on to this past year, uh, 2021, because I've experienced a significant loss in my family. As you, um, as you mentioned, I am a mother of five boys, five boys. Okay, everybody take a breath right now. Boys. Five boys. <laughs> boys. Um, my youngest is 10. My, my, uh, four older, my four older boys are adults. My oldest son, my oldest son, Carrie James, we lost on January 1st of last year to suicide. And that has been a the well the most difficult thing i've ever experienced in my life um and in embarking on last year embarking on that grief journey i'm still on that grief journey but it's the characteristics of the lotus flower that has helped me get to this point to where i can sit here and talk to you right now um because even in the most unbelievably terrible situations in the lowest of the lowest vibration mm -hmm. there is light and in the midst of it when we're in the midst of the chaos we may not be able to see the light we we you know it's foggy we can't see it but just knowing that there is is enough mm -hmm. where we attract you know the universe has our back where we attract the people, the situations, and the things that we need um, to heal through. Uh, in my case, through the grief journey, not never getting over it. Right. Absolutely. Mm. And I think that's an important thing for people to understand is you never get over it. At some point, you are able to move forward. Yes. Because I know uh, my cousin, uh, we lost my cousin quite a few years ago now, also to suicide. And there's always the question that pops back into your mind, you know, the why, the how come, all of those. But you I get to a point where you can almost, I don't even want to say accept. It, it just is what it is. So you can move forward in your life. I believe that's the energy mm -hmm. that I'm in. Mm -hmm. is, is acceptance. And I know, you know, when we we're talking about grief, that there there's all kinds of models talking about the different levels and stages of grief. Um, you know, I accepted what happened when it happened. Uh, I didn't, you know, you don't have to like what you must accept, right? And Very so my, my experience has been the whys, but also um, getting to a place of peace that type of acceptance of mm -hmm. peace. Um, I have a strong knowing that uh, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So my son, although he's not physically here, he, trust me, he lets me know he's still around. <laughs> and that helps, you know, those yeah. have that strong um, belief system. In my case, I call it a knowing system um, that that really helps, you know, um, but I'm telling you, last year was uh, the biggest challenge of my life just to um, just to be functional. Sure. And, you know, I started my podcast last year. I did all of these beautiful things connected with you through KSMG, mm -hmm. you know, met Cornelia Stephanie and KSMG. So I was able to get a lot of things done, but it, you know, it was just the most difficult. 
And then um, the anniversary of my son's passing was on January 1st, by the way, January 1st is his birthday. So he took his, he took his life on his birthday, which kind of compounded everything. Sure. Um, but mm-hmm. it was something about when 2022 hit and January 1st hit and my boys and I, we did something really special to recognize um, um, Carrie. But once, once we did that, I just felt this peace and he would want me to move forward, right? He would want me to find the happiness and the joy. And so that's what is helping me through. That's what's helping me through. It's just that acceptance and that peace. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me also like your experience with the lotus flower and finding the light, that has that has really helped you to get to a place where you are, not just at a place where you are today, but even in this past year, incredible sadness, incredible grief, yet you were still able to do beautiful things for other people. Because, because it fulfills me and mm-hmm. because it, um, it, it's so helping others to heal helps me to heal. Um, and you know, that's why I became a 7D intuitive healer. I've been an energy healer, you know, for over 20 years, but specifically a 7D intuitive healer, 7D uh, energy healing came into my life last year and was instrumental in pulling me out of the deepest of the deep of my depression and grief. Mm. Um, And so, and to be able to share that now with others and help others to heal helps me heal. It's a beautiful energy exchange and a beautiful reflection. Um, Amazing. Yeah. Tell us more about the 7D intuitive healer. Um, Cause this was, this is new to me. Yes. I, it, I, 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 so please explain to me. So I, you know, we can share this with, with our audience, you know, what does that mean? And, and, you know, what are the, the, the differences and how uh, you can help people? <clears throat> Absolutely. So if, you know, you're familiar with Reiki and things like um, Qigong. There are different modalities of energy healing. Those modalities that I just mentioned are third dimensional, um, which is where we are. We're in the third dimension. And so the energy healing that I am attuned to is called a high 7D. And it is energy healing that is um, zero uh, from zero, zero source energy but it is rooted in the seventh dimension. So where the seventh dimension is, is where the Akashic records are. Um, It is where our spirit guides and uh, our ancestors, our ascended masters are. And so I channel that energy um, to others. It is very powerful. And um, I have a lot of Reiki masters coming to me to get tuned up so that they can continue with their work. Um, wow. Right. It, mm-hmm. is, um, it is very powerful. It's divine feminine energy. And it is beautiful because it self upgrades. So what I mean by that is, mm-hmm. you know, um, if, for me, I'll just take Reiki as an example. Sure. Um, you know, we get our, our um, sessions, we get our energy healing, and then um, we go back for the regular sessions, right? And so with so seven day healing, you don't have to go come to me as often. You see the results um, uh, quicker. There are a lot of times where I, I know for me, um, other modalities, they, they aren't as, uh, effective for me anymore because oh, sure. it's, it's You're almost like what, there's a word that is coming to my mind that I'm where, oh gosh, I can't remember the word what, tolerant. Is it tolerant when uh, plateaued, um, and I'm signing to you, that's the sign for plateau, but um, <laughs> plateau. Where, where the energy is not as, um, as it doesn't work as effectively. And so um, with 7D healing, um, you receive what you need, it goes to where you need. And then as you, um, you, as you heal, the energy healing upgrades with you. So when you come back to me, when you come back to me, um, you're ready for the next level. Mm-hmm. 
right? You're ready for the next level. Mm -hmm. So it's it's absolutely beautiful. It changed my life. The very first time I received, um, you know, I went to a group healing session and I was like, okay, what is this all about? And Mm -hmm. I swear I was tingling for two days straight. Like I was tingling, like, what is this? And miracles happened in my life. Um, And so I knew then I had to become a practitioner. Wow. Now you said you've been doing energy medicine for 20 years. How did you originally get you know, involved, um, or even connected because it's, it's not one of those things that's, that's, it's not mainstream. So how do you eat 20 years ago? Right. Right. Um, they call it, you know, woo woo or, or uh, <laughs> yeah, the, woo-woo. the woo-woo factor, I am, honey, I own my woo woo very much, <laughs> but, um, I've always been interested in crystals. Um, I've always been interested in crystals and in my, um, research and education about crystals and how they can help me. I d- decided to uh, further my education in that and become certified as a crystal uh, as a crystal healer. And then in 2006, I had a near death experience where I was um, in a coma for five days. Oh my. Yeah, I had an asthma attack and I um, ended up in a coma for five days, had a, had a near-death experience, this whole enlightened thing that happened. But when I woke up, I woke up to the sound of a Tibetan singing bowl. And it turns out um, there was a Buddhist monk there. I was a Buddhist at the time. Mm. And um, there was a Buddhist monk there that was invited by um, some close friends of mine. Um, but that singing bowl um, really, really spoke to me. Mm-hmm. And so when I recovered from that, I sought him out. His name is Min. He's a Buddhist monk. And I learned about the healing effects of sound. And so then I decided to uh, learn how to become a sound healer. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what I find is that because I naturally am um, sensitive to energy, I'm an empath. I'm also clairaudient. I have, you know, these spiritual gifts that um, heighten the energy around me. So I, I've learned how to tune into or protect myself from, depending on the, the sure. frequency of the energy, how to work with the energy of the universe for my benefit. And um, that's part of my work. What I do with the sacred path is teaching others how to work with that energy as well. So the 7D, um, I started a, um, I started the Mind, Body, Soul 7D healing program um, in my business. And that incorporates all three modalities that I'm certified in. So it's a one of a kind um, energy healing experience. Um, and I feel like yeah, that it was, it's just what I'm meant to do. It's natural mm-hmm. to me. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you talk one of a kind. I mean, when I first met you, I actually, that was one of the, the thoughts that came across my mind. It's like, man, that girl is one of a kind. She's unique. Aww. She's special. And Aww, thank it's, you. <laughs> it, it truly, truly, I mean, um, even that very first day that, um, that we were connected, we were on a call and you were in a real, t- you were in a really tough place but your strength and your love just showed through. And I understand what now, where that really comes from. Yes. It's always me um, growing towards the light. Mm -hmm. It's always looking for the light. You know, another um, symbol that I love is the yin yang symbol because we, you know, you have the light, the dark, the negative, the positive, the masculine, the feminine. Um, and if you can visualize that symbol on the dark side of the yin yang symbol, there's a little bit of the light and on the light side, there's a little bit of the dark and the goal is no matter where we are, what's happening, whether it's especially, especially when we're in the yang part of our lives to always focus Mm -hmm. on that light because they're always there always is light. And so that's what you see when you see in me, that's what you see, you know, and I love that I can be vulnerable Mm -hmm. um, in our group and, and can be in those low vibrations, but doing so and releasing that 
helps me to radiate that light. Yeah. I appreciate that you said that because it's, it's so true. You can't always be on what I think call is on. Sometimes you just have to be and feel whatever that negative energy, that ne- negative thought is. And yes. to find a place and to find people who you are comfortable with expressing that and just being able to deal with that. Cause that is actually something that very often I struggle with. You know, I always feel like when I'm on camera or when I'm talking to people, I have to be me. This is the me that everybody sees. But Mm -hmm. sometimes there's the me that has the migraine headache that feels like, you know, I don't really, really want to do this today, but okay, I'll just smile. And so I really appreciate that you, that you just said that, because I think the people need to understand that that's okay too. You know, we want to live in this high vibration. Yes. But there's also, there's kind of the, the, there's the the yin and and the yang, and you cannot have one without the other. I think for most people, it's just, it's hard to allow ourselves, you know, with social media and all, all the, the, you know, stimuli from outside of us saying, be happy, be happy, be happy. (laughs) Yeah. No, go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And that's not the real, that's not how it works. And so when we are experiencing those really challenging times, and this is something I really had to not, not really learn because I know, but Mm -hmm. I, I, it's like a review, you know, sometimes the universe gives you review lessons. Mm -hmm. And the huge one for me is to allow myself to feel what I feel. If I am sad, if I'm upset, if I'm angry, um, whatever the low vibration is to allow myself to feel it. Don't see, I think a lot of um, what trips us up is resisting that and resisting mm-hmm. the need to, or, you know, resisting the low vibration. Yeah. But when we allow ourselves to experience and feel it, then it has been brought to the light. The Lotus is emerging through the muddy waters. You see what I'm saying? I do. When we resist, we're holding it down. Mm-hmm. And that's what I call swimming in the, or drowning in the muddy waters or swimming in the muddy waters. Mm-hmm which no, we want to emerge through them. And so allowing myself to feel what I feel, especially being able to share that with high vibrational people that will support me, you know, and some people may not understand exactly what I'm going through, but, uh, but they understand the energy that I'm in. Right. Absolutely. That's all, that's all that matters. I'm here for you. That's all that matters. I'm here for you. You know, I, I, you know, we love you. Like having that really helps because once that has been brought to the light, then you can address it. You can heal through it. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's only until we allow ourselves to do that. And I think people, you know, some people are resistant to that and, and I do understand it, but when we just law of attraction, honey, when we resist things, Mm -hmm. the universe will give us more to resist. That's just how it works. Mm -hmm. That was always an interesting, uh, the the law of attraction has always been an interesting and intriguing thing for me. Uh, Years ago, when my niece was, maybe she was 13 at the time, she was here visiting and we watched the movie, The Law of Attraction. And she was funny. She was really angry. She said, why hasn't anybody told me this before? And (laughs) she truly at 13 understood so much better than I think people who are really starting to come into the understanding at a much older age, Mm -hmm. you know, so at 13, I mean, she's 18 now and she still talks law of attraction and will even say, you know, I'm, I'm not in a good way today. I'm stressed today, or I'm, uh, I, I feel anxiety today. And she says, okay, so I need to deal with that so I can make that go away and get better things coming to me. I love that. And it's amazing that it truly at 13 that she was able to understand that so quickly. Yet for me, I was a lot older and I kind of went, I had to really, really think about it and and under to understand the, where it was coming from, though, truly, I, I did see in people like, you know, negative people, more negative things ha- happen to negative people, happy go lucky people, 
seemed to have a lot more happy things going for them. So I could see that, but I couldn't, I, it took me a long time to understand that they were actually bringing that, they were drawing that to themselves. Yes. And we um, manifest things into our lives some subconsciously every single day, all the time. The law of attraction is always, it's like gravity, you know, it's always working in our lives. <laughs> and so it is. And so, um, and the most powerful manifestors I know are children and young people, mm-hmm. right? They don't have as many layers of life and filters and conditioning that us older um, people have. But mm-hmm. I love it because what we focus on, I mean, we know what the law of attraction is. What we focus on attracts, we attract. But, and I'm in the midst, actually, we're in week three of a powerful manifesting challenge in my Facebook group. And this week we were talking about setting powerful intention because we can set intention, right? We set intention by just thinking it and wanting it. But setting powerful intention is really focusing on what we want versus what we don't want. Ah, yes. I give the example of the man in, or woman in the uh, white shirt and a red, a glass of red wine. (laughs) Like if you were at a party somewhere and you had this beautiful white sweater on and they're serving this delicious red wine. I know in the past I'd be like, honey, I do not want to spill this wine on this shirt. This, I look too good in this. I don't want to spill it. And guess what's going to happen? I'm going to spill it. But why is that? It isn't because I said I don't want to. It's because my focus was on spilling the wine. Mm -hmm. So the universe says, oh, spilled wine. Okay, here you go. Here you go. Spilling the wine. Mm -hmm. So once we realize that we have the power with our focus and our energy to draw into us what it is we want, then we realize the true power that we have to consciously create the life that we want. And that is even in the midst of low vibration. Like all those challenges and things that we were talking about. So like even last year, you know, my son passed away in, um, in January and by June, no, actually it was May. Um, my podcast was started, but here you go. I set intention for a podcast back in 2018. Ah, Mm -hmm. okay. I set intention. I set intention for that. And then I tried and then I was like, okay, this is going to be too much work. Put it off, put it off, put it off. And then I did, I'm not thinking about it. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, the universe is like, hey, remember that podcast? Here you go. Yep. yep. So I, I you, know, yeah, and, you know, I get to radiate my, um, you, first of all, turn my pain into purpose and transmute my grief into something beautiful by radiating my light and Carrie's light through my work, through my podcast, right? Yep. So, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I love, it it was your niece. You said that, um, yeah, I love how your niece said, you know, let me get rid of this. Let me, let me address this, which is that um, allowing ourselves to feel it. We acknowledge and allow, Mm -hmm. and then now it's in the light. Now we can deal with it. Okay. I'm going to put you over here so that I can bring to me what it is I really want in my life. And, and, and that's how it works. Mm -hmm. It's a constant day by day sometimes minute by minute process. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and we think, you know, you know, we talk about mindset and all that, and it it is a mindset, but it's a, it's just, it's a positive mindset. It, it It's a thoughtful mindset. It doesn't have to be a positive mindset, a negative mindset. I think if we're just, we have a mindset and we're thinking about things in life, mm-hmm. thinking about the good, um, experiencing the bad and not, um, kind of keeping it all at bay. Yeah. Or That's where the healing either comes. not keeping it all at bay or, and, you know, I talked about swimming in the muddy waters, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. swimming in it and staying in it and staying in it and staying in it. And sometimes it can be, and I know this because uh, last year, my experience, uh, it, it, it was, it was really hard sometimes to come out of the deep, deep grief. It, it, it was hard to come out of the deep, deep grief. 
But then I had to make the conscious decision to take a step forward, Mm -hmm. to move forward. Mm -hmm. I had to make the conscious decision. Okay, I'm not going to be in this at this level of low vibration anymore. Mm -hmm. Right now, Mm -hmm. you know, how long we stay, how quickly we heal, that is up to us. It is up to what there's no, no time limit. There's no rule book on how long, Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, you know, and usually I come out of things, you know, I come out of things a lot quicker, but, um, of course this was like the most devastating thing. It took me how long it took me. Right. But once I made the decision, okay, I'm, no more. I'm ready to vibrate higher and I will vibrate higher. Then the universe says, oh, you want to vibrate higher? Okay, here you go. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities come, the healing comes. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. I do. We have to, you know, it's all about being self-aware and self-conscious, knowing that we have the power within us. And you made a good point. You allowed yourself to feel the feelings. And then got to a point where you said, okay, next, let's go, you know, move on to that next feeling, not that next phase in life, but that next feeling, that next higher yeah, vibration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, I, my, my son was, he was a jokester. He was highly intelligent, always joking, always laughing, always dancing. You know, I missed that about myself. He got it from me, by the way. <laughs> and I miss that, I can you know, that. myself, I miss, you know, I'm, I'm all about peace, love, and light. That's what, what my, I guess if you, you know, my motto is peace, love, and light. I say it all the time. I was not feeling peace, love, and light all last year. I'm trying to tell you, but, um, but I want to get back to that place mm-hmm. of happiness. I want to find my joy. Sure. I want to be in that energy. And so in order to be there, I have to take action to, mm-hmm to move towards that. Right. And so the, the earlier, when we were, when we were uh, talking about, you know, my experience with this loss, um, you know, and I talked about the grief and I talked about how hard it was. Um, and now I can look back and say, and learn the, the lessons from that and take that and transmute it into something to help others, which brings me joy. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. It's okay to find laughter. By the way, you can grieve and laugh at the same time. I've learned that too, you know, and it's, and it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's just all about allowing yourself to be you 100%. That is a beautiful point. Allowing yourself to be you. Yes. There are some, there there used to be a people pleaser in me, right? Oh yeah. (laughs) I know and that the, girl too. <laughs> and the perfectionist in me, um, because I, I do, I care so much about how other people receive my energy. Um, but it comes, but when it comes to the point where it is um, denying me of my own joy to make other people happy or to satisfy someone else's expectations, that's not, that's not how we live. That's not what we're here Mm -hmm. for. That's not, we are here to live. That's what we're here to do. Right. And to, and to radiate our light and to find our purpose and to connect and interconnect with others and to vibrate higher and to make this world a better place. Like that's what we're here for. We're here. We're here to experience the BS too. And the low vibration that that Mm -hmm. all comes with it. But I can only do that being unapologetically T Lotus. Like I can have it no other way. I I, love it. And that's what everyone should, everyone should be unapologetic. Absolutely. Yep. Unapologetically who you are and, 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 you know, love yourself. I think that's, that's a piece, you know, there's, there's love in the world and there's love in here and love yourself. It's first to love others. If, you know, you know how I said, what you see in me is a reflection of what's already in you. So, you know, we both, and I'm using us as an example because we're here today. We both can see a situation, the same exact thing and see it from different perspectives in totally different ways. So 
if one person chooses to see the world as cruel and th 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 this is just a cruel, cruel, horrible world and that type of thing, mm -hmm. well, that's what they're going to see. And right. a lot of times that's what's going to be attracted and manifested mm -hmm. and experienced in their life. Or we can choose to see the beauty in the world, the love in the world, because all of those things are already within us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's so, it's so true because I'm one of those people I like to see, I do, I see the beauty in the world. Um, no matter what the situation, you know, there's always good, you know, whatever is on the news, all the negative, all the horrible things that are happening in the news, you know what, there are so many beautiful things happening in communities and neighborhoods. People yes. are doing amazing things to, you know, for each other yes. you know, here in Minnesota, it's really cold you know, and I don't love cold, but I got to tell you, it's beautiful. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful blue sky. So it's cold out, but look at the rest of the picture. And I think that's part of it too. People tend to think that, you know, they just look at the one little piece of the picture when there's this whole big. Oh, I love that you said canvas. that. Yes. Yes. The picture is so much bigger than how we're looking at it right yeah like right? the telescope but sometimes we limit ourselves mm -hmm. and um and yeah. i love that i love that seeing the big the whole picture because when we allow ourselves to do that that is when we start to see that beauty mm -hmm. and that love and that 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 joy all of those things absolutely oh i love it d lotus thank you my friend um please tell us a couple things before we head off um how does one get in touch with you? Thank you so much. Well, you can find me um, on Facebook at The Sacred Path. Um, I have a Facebook group, The Sacred Path. You can also find me on my website, thesacredpath11.com. I'm also on the KS Media Group app. You can find me there. You can find, oh, you find me there too. I said my phone's on the floor. <laughs> And on Instagram at the Sacred Path Eleven. So everybody, if you hadn't caught that, the Sacred Path, the Sacred Path Eleven. Okay. And the last thing before we go, what is one piece of one last piece of advice, um, strategy, um, love, confidence, resilience that you could share with us? I like to say all the time. I tell, I tell my clients, I tell, tell everyone, you are a part of all that is, all that is. And as wondrous, as powerful, as amazing as this universe is, so are you. And to remember that and to know that as wonderful, as beautiful, as amazing as this universe is, so are you. And with that, thank you. Thank you. Peace, thank love, and light. Peace, love, and light, my friend. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, whether you're here um, watching the replay uh, or if you're on our website, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on the Living Healthy List uh, website, livinghealthylist.com. We're here uh, for the Wonder Series every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until next week, I leave you with this. Healthy living, happy life. Have a great day, everyone.